type. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Alpha Book Club. I'm Rachel Hine. This is our online book club for all of our Alpha community members. Joining me as always is Hector Navarro. What's up, everybody? And Maud Garrett. Hey, sir. <laughs> um, if you guys are joining us for the first time, we just spent the last month reading and dissecting A Wrinkle in Time. And don't worry, we will still be saying, let's get our wrinkle on. Every time. Every, oh, every time. Book. Doesn't matter what no matter book it what. is. It's set in stone now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> this month, we are tackling book one of the Dark Tower series, The Gunslinger. Which is, whew, we have, yeah. we're going to, I don't know how we're going to fit it into an hour. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Um, we want to hear from you guys, so make sure you're hitting us up in the chat. We can see you right here. We want to get your feedback. You can dial in if you want to later in the show. But we have a lot to talk about, so let's get into the gunslinger. Really appreciate Spence. First of all, Spence in the chat, uh, the icon is that great gif of that guy going like this. Yeah. Uh, what, what if it was a Dark Tower line, like, time to get our tower on, time to get our Idris Elba on? Ooh. I love the enthusiasm. I think it's going to be wrinkle on every time. Um, uh, there's a shoot pun in there somewhere. There's a shoot yeah. pun, right? Yeah. Somebody yeah. said, Gun. time to get our sling on. Let's get slinging. Sling They're on. really trying. Ooh. Time to get our sling on. Slinging some slinging. Yeah. Slinging some. Sl okay. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> the book? Let's, let's talk about the book. Okay, Hector. Great. Yeah. So, uh, in previous books, I've read the intro. I will mm. not. And I, got, and I got spoiled a couple of times. Mm. So, because I have not read this one, I didn't read it. Mm, I opt out as well for that same thing. I want to go in pure. I want to go in fresh. Mm -hmm. I don't Great. need to know about Stephen King. This is my first ever Stephen King book. Me too. Wow. Oh, really? Book yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This it's has awakened a part of my dead mind that I didn't know existed. What? And I'm in the gym, because you know, I read it while I'm on cycling. I'm cycling at the gym. Uh -huh. And I had these moments where I was just like, Oh, and I try to <laughs> highlight the beautiful sentences that mm -hmm. just sit with me. And then I realized I was highlighting like every third sentence. So, I'm his so gorgeous excited. writing. Yeah, his oh writing is God. beautiful. Hey guys, turns out Stephen King's a good writer. Really? <laughs> yeah. Good. Turns yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And not just a horror author? No. Yeah. No. Which is what good I writer. thought. The Hello. first one that I got into was The Eyes of the Dragon, which is more I fantasy. Love that song. Yeah, yes. Eyes of the Dragon. Stop it, Maud. <laughs> no, keep going, Maud. Um, but there's all. <laughs> But uh, he also wrote, I mean, in the 70s, he wrote, his first book was Carrie. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Was I he mean, bullied? I, am uh, I mean, he grew I up in Maine. Everything is said yes. in Maine. You can see yes. a lot of the similar things. He was in a car accident, which factors into some of his stuff like um, Dark Tower. Tra Dark Tower. Because he wrote the first, was it uh, a few of the books, and then he had the crash, and mm -hmm. then it was a big wait for the next one, and people that were diehard fans of the book didn't like that wait. And I was like, you know what? Don't read Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ugh. And then Dreamcatcher 2, which is a terrible movie that I love to watch. Oh. Who's in that? Um, that is Thomas Jane. <gasps> oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it um, looks bad. Oh, gosh. Uh, Timothy Tom Oliphant. Jane. Great. Oh, uh, it sounds like a Hayden Christensen kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when you tried to not be Darth Vader. Oh, yeah. I it's all I know. But, um, but that one is has a key character who's in a car accident and gets mm -hmm. sort of like magic right. powers and things like that. I so. mean, just Stephen King, it's just it. Cujo, Under the Dome, 112663, Misery, Misery. Carrie, Firestarter. So many. But then the, didn't he legends. do, he wrote Shawshank Redemption, Green Mile as well? Didn't he write mm -hmm. those? Wow. The Running Man. Was there too? Mm -hmm. The Rain Man? Wow. The Running Man. The Running Man. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. So, yeah, it's my first What Stephen else King. did you uh, learn from. Yeah, tell us about the intro. So, good news is, Without guys, that the intro it. is not spoilerific. You can read it. It doesn't okay. give away anything in the story because I didn't know this about The Dark Tower, but, uh, or rather, the first book in the series. The first book was published in 82, and it was apparently originally published as five separate stories written between 1978 and 1981. Um, uh, so, like you guys were describing, he did get into a car accident. I think, I don't know when it happened, but the. But the chat will tell us. The chat will tell us. But the last few like books in the something. series, yeah, yeah, 90 something, the last few books in the series, I think book seven and eight came mm -hmm. out, or six and seven rather, came out um, in the early 2000s. And by 2002, the series was done. But um, what he had decided to do uh, after he was writing j even the first few books in the 80s and 90s and everything, was that he was always planning to go back and basically revise the entire series. Mm -hmm. So what he did is he went back and revised the first book which he wrote in 1982, and this is what we're reading. We're reading the revised version. Yes. And after he did that, he was like, you know what? This fits well enough with the rest of the series that like, I don't need to revise the rest of it. I'm good. Because he explains okay. in the foreword why he decided to do that. Some characters that appear early on 
uh, a similar name will then be used all those years later. And he's like, you know what? That was my bad. I just like to clean things up, kind of make it all fit together mm -hmm. thematically. That's what you're saying. It connects everything, connects, but it also connects with themes of other books I was which hearing. Is, which I don't even know anything about, and it's fascinating. Well, but how? the other thing that I thought was really interesting from the forward was that Stephen King admits, you know, when I, re when I went back and reread the first uh, book, The Gunslinger, that it definitely felt like a young man wrote this. Right. And when he said that, I was like, okay, I, I'm all right, great. I'd already heard a bit of a reputation of Stephen King as being kind of a womanizer, a guy who is a professor and would literally stand in hallways smoking his cigarettes and just like oogling the young women that are walking by. I've already heard stuff like that, those kinds of rumors, okay? I don't know if it's true or not. That's but defamation. It, 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 it could be. <laughs> like, it yeah. could be. It, if it's in print, it's libel. But I'm saying that that kind of stuff is floating around in my brain when I'm reading now Stephen King when I'm reading it. But the fact that he himself called it out in, in his forward, kind of calling himself out, going, look, when I wrote this, I was a young man, and you can tell that a young man wrote this story, I felt like that sort of uh, informed how I felt about specifically the female characters aspect of the first two ah, stories that we, wrote, that we yes. read. Right. So we can talk about that a little bit, but that's yep. kind of just what's in the forward is him giving you the context of like, okay, this is why I decided to revise just the first one, now the rest of it's good to go, enjoy, you know, I love this series. I think it's fantastic. Uh, well, he didn't really say that. He was like, I don't think I'm a good I writer. I think I'm great. So, like, he's just great. He's great. So, 1999 um, was the crash. 1999. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Thank According you, Java Book Geek Girl. I you. really do respect that because yeah. the equivalent I find is me going back to year 12 Oof. and asking my English teacher for my paper <sighs> where I got a B minus and I should have got a C plus. <laughs> um, she told me that to my face and go through that and be like, I can do better. Sorry, Absolutely. Greg Gatsby, I didn't do you justice. <laughs> now that I've gone through it again, yeah. I really feel like I can do better. And not just that, I'm sure I Stephen King, I mean, that. listen, in 1982, Stephen King was an amazing writer still from the late 70s to the early 80s. But even as human beings, we change over decades mm -hmm. and our priorities change and the, our, view, our worldview changes. So mm. I think that he went through and, and even edited himself and said, I was somebody who was taking a lot of writing classes and somebody who was reading a lot about writing. And so there's a lot of like stuff and language that I cut. Right. So I think that's really interesting because I'm still reading this and I'm like, man, how more elaborate can you get? What else did you cut? He the is a simile master, isn't he? Simile yeah. master. Oh. It's beautiful. And I think, too, that's always something I've noticed. I haven't read every Stephen King book because that's mm -hmm. crazy, but I've read some of them. And it is that like very wordy, verbose descriptions that are so beautiful. And it can be in some of the longer, really long ones, like The Stand and stuff like that, you're like, Okay, right. this mountain is beautiful. Like, <laughs> just yeah. calm Coloring it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but generally, I mean, yeah, I was, I, I had to stop too because I was like, oh, this is beautiful. This is yeah. beautiful. The language and the. I'd love to read some out actually. After. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a little confused. Sure. Same. It jumps around a little bit. What's yeah. happening? So, so far, this is I need what, your help. <laughs> this is what mm. is uh, in the teleprompter. We're going to tell you guys right now because this is what's in the teleprompter. And this is all true facts. The book tells a story of a character named Roland, the gunslinger, and his quest to catch the man in black. We've only read the first two. Hold on, two. when did we say his name, Roland? Uh, Very near he, the, oh, the right. Near the end of the first story, I believe, because yeah. I think he whispers it to, I'm forgetting the name of the woman he Allie, had a relationship Allie. with. I think he yeah. whispers it to Allie. Right. And then at one point, Stephen King says in the writing, and the man she called Roland mm -hmm. yeah, went that's away where it was. and did something. Because yeah. I noticed the first time he introduces himself, I think mm -hmm. it was to the dweller. You know, he it says his name and he goes, and I introduced, you know, and the gunslinger said his. Yeah. I was like, oh, are, are we keeping this? Yeah, like, are we keeping this? I liked that. I liked time? being in the, the dark time? about and it. And the man in black, too. the bride type of thing? Yeah. yeah, the man in black introduces himself as a name. But well, you saw we it in the, in the... In the letter. That's yeah. It. What was it, Tim something? It was like a really... Mm -hmm. it was kind Winston? Of a dorky Winston? Oh. Winston? Yeah. yeah. I'm playing a lot of Overwatch, though, so that could just be the monkey. So, so yeah, so normally what we do on this segment previously on is we kind of, you know, recap what we read previously. <laughs> but this is uh, this is we're, we're kind of what we've all been talking about the context and you know uh, yeah what else we kind of know about what this story is I guess and maybe some context with Stephen King we'll go ahead and do that too yeah I'd love to hear everyone's first Stephen King novel in the chat by the way if you yeah. have read a novel because like someone actually commented saying oh there it is Zoidberg 11 saying whoa what a book to jump into for mm -hmm. our first Stephen King mm -hmm. and I was like well I want to know what you've been reading too then Oh, did we see the leaked trailer for The Dark Tower, asked Spence. I haven't seen it yet. I did. Oh, you did? What did you think? Yeah. I did not. What did you think? Do you know what I read? want? I want purity. I, it was so fast. I like watched it because I knew it was going to get taken down. And oh. it was very like, dun, 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 just different like scenes. So trailers. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't really put yeah. 
any of it cool. together. Oh, and you look at that. We've got some pictures here from Entertainment Weekly. That oh, is good because I wasn't Elba. gonna look at any wow. of it. <laughs> Please show it to my face. <laughs> ah. This is Elba as Roland, the gunslinger. Okay, I can't see anyone else. Yeah. And when they were describing him, I know the color of his shirt. I know the feel and texture of his holster. I know I can feel the gun in my hand. Mm -hmm. Never mentions his skin color. Yeah. And I kind of love yeah. that. I love yeah. it too. That's true. But everything else, elaborate detail. Mm -hmm. I think we I'm had a picture of Matthew McConaughey as the man mm -hmm. in black. I can see him as well. Ooh, and we, that yeah. twang, when it's like, oh. when they call him Sai, S-A-I, instead yeah. of Sir. Mm -hmm. I yeah. kind of love that twang. And you know yeah. that he's probably one of the few actors that can authentically pull that off. Oh, absolutely. Sai. So absolutely. He's, he's man in black. Yeah. Yes, he is. How do you, how do you think about that? It's good? It's good. I, I want to see him tussle cast. with that priest woman, because I'm yes. picturing her as quite large. Yes. Yes. Well, like just deep, pearly, that was a whole interesting vast skin. Section too. That fleshy really like nine times. Yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah I know. Yeah, they and had they an interesting description for her in that one. And that was, um, I mean, this whole book is like a mind trip. It's a yeah. mind F, you guys. Yeah. Yes. Should we get into it? Yes. I mean, let's just get into it. Let's yeah. get into it. Okay. Let's um, do it. What, what, what's going on, Rachel? What's going on in, this first, in the first story that's called The Gunslinger? So the first story is that we meet The Gunslinger. Who is oh, can we talk about the opening line? Yes. Oh, oh it's this, iconic. Yeah. It's absolutely iconic. And I That's noticed, I didn't get to say it about Wrinkle in Time, but it was a dark and stormy night. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is where it's from? Oh mm. my gosh, you joke about it. But now having like, I, I feel I'm a little spoiled with opening lines and I want it to be good. Mm -hmm. And then I read this, I was like, oh damn, that's a good that's start. That's a good, look at that. And yeah. Cool. Lee Zerwin in the chat says, my first was The Gunslinger as well. Oh so wow. Cool. Right. Cool, cool, cool. cool. And awesome. uh, Mizium says, I'm so stoked for the film. I'm only on book four of The Dark Tower. I'm hoping only. I'm done by the release of the film or that it doesn't spoil anything beyond, beyond Wizard and Glass. Cool. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Cool, so what is uh, chapter one, The Gunslinger? Yeah, so The Gunslinger is going through the desert and... The, well, the man in black floated uh, across the desert and the gunslinger followed. Yes. I can oh. see him doing that as an elevator pitch. I've got this new story, what is it? Yeah. Well, the man mm -hmm. in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. I want it now. It's Any books? Yep. Well, plenty. <laughs> it's yeah. fine. Plenty. Tons. <laughs> tons yeah. and tons. Yeah, it has this very spaghetti western vibe to it, post-apocalyptic. It's kind of the road, has elements of the road by Cormac McCarthy reminded me of that. Mm -hmm. And so the gunslinger is chasing after this man in black. We know that there is no, there's not a lot of water. We later come mm. upon a town, but he's basically chasing this man who is claiming to be God. In Across a sadistic way. Yes. Like, that's what I also loved. Like, yeah. he's searching for these fires. He's searching for his camp. And he, like, looks out for little things. He's trying to find any kind of evidence of when. where he, what he ate, where he went to the bathroom. And there's mm -hmm. nothing. And he's kind of, like, reveling in this. And there's also, the, when you go through the fires and there's this, um, this weed... The devil the weed? The devil weed that it seems like it's a hallucinogenic as well mm -hmm. because we get into that later in Toll. But yeah, he's he's time doesn't really seem to make sense. Mm -hmm. References to we can, you know when we first start, you don't know is this a post-apocalyptic world? Is this an alternate, you know, timeline? Right. They describe the world as being similar to our own, mm -hmm. right? Don't they kind of well, say that? Well, the giveaway but that I found because I was the same sort of thing. We could be anywhere at any time. Mm -hmm. We have no idea. And then boom, they made a Beatles reference with Hey Jude, and well, I was like, Whoa, okay, right? Yeah, and I think later on you have more, and this is way further on um, with. Uh, Jake, but you see other references to different places and more modern things mm -hmm. that um, that makes me think that I have some ideas about what the tower might be, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but I also is speaking about the Hey Jude reference and other references that are, uh, uh, you know, things that we recognize. I don't want to get tricked, too, because I'm like, that's just a song named Hey Jude. I don't know if it's our Hey Jude. Mm. Right? No, I mean, then my reference, no. Nah, right, nah, nah, right. Nah, but nah, even nah, then, nah. I'm like, that could be a completely different beat, a completely <laughs> different, like, I, I want to get really it nerdy with it. It could be an iPad like, in Maud's hand, but it also could be a device that activates bullshit. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I don't want to get fooled, Maud. I don't want to get fooled. So, you know, all of the references, I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know if they know what that is or if it's the same thing. But, yeah, it's... it's but it looks like it's bad. Yeah. It works like it's bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really interesting. Yeah. Good, please, okay. Rachel, go on. What else, what's, what, what else is happening? So then he ends mm -hmm. up uh, coming across a young dweller, a surprisingly young man with a wild shock of strawberry hair that almost mm. reached to his waist. Yep. Who's playing that? character that would be crazy Named not eddie Brown. redmayne i hope yeah hopefully an, uh, <laughs> it should be great damn it <laughs> <laughs> and so he he goes to stay with this man who 
could be a mirage, could be a trap set by the man in black. Clearly the man in black has some sort of magic powers. He's setting these traps from we, when we get into the backstory that he tells this man, the mm -hmm. dweller, you see that he has lain, laid these traps for but Roland it sounds like the gunslinger the is a Hector Navarro big time where he just questions he's everything. Paranoid. Oh, yeah. it's a trap. Yes. Oh, it's a trap. Speaking Whereas I'm that, just like, no, yes. if he's feeding you, <laughs> exactly. he's a friend. Can we talk about that for a second? Did any of you guys think at any point that uh, Roland, the gunslinger, is the villain in this story? I yeah. doubt it's, he's going to be because he's going to be played by Idris Elba. There's seven books in the series. I don't think they're going to like Idris tr like, Elba trick. has played quite mm -hmm. a few villains. Yes, he has. Yes, yeah. he has. Okay. Star Trek Beyond this year. But <laughs> the point is, is that is when I keep Bellamy? hearing... You know, we're in we're in the gunslinger's head, and the gunslinger is paranoid about every single little thing. I'm like, what if the man in black really is like a holy man, and the gunslinger is the antichrist, te you know, tearing through this town, killing people that he says they're possessed. I'm like, what if you're just killing? I, I don't know yet. No, I don't I know. I think that that's valid. Actually. No, yeah. I I do yeah. too, especially because he's he's seeking this mystical tower that has all of these powers, and it it feels a little bit like he's. Tr I mean, it it all depends on your perspective, right? So if you're trying to dismantle a system or find someone who's a leader, from any point of view, you could be the hero or the villain. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. So I totally agree with that. I think that there could be seven books. I, I mean, look at Breaking Bad. There are plenty of things that focus on the anti-hero, the villain, mm -hmm. and I think sure. that would be really interesting to get that reveal maybe at the end of well, this. Well, the first time he comes in, um, in contact with someone very religious, she immediately is like, you are the antichrist. You yeah. are the devil. Like, you know, and I, for me, that was when I was like, Ooh. Ooh, I like this be. guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he could be, right. Yeah, it's, he yeah, be. it's Because you keep saying everything's a trap, everything's a trap, and you cannot help but feel as a reader, no, maybe not everything is. You're shooting people that you're saying are insane, but really I think he's just warped by you know, his mission and his goal. So mm. Yeah, and yeah. then we ha so then we also have uh, Zoltan. Oh, the, oh my gosh, it's so fun. <laughs> I love him. So he's so great. He's so good. Is it like, screw you and the mule you rode in on? Yeah, yeah and you obviously so know good. that the dweller had said that. Beans, beans, the musical fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So great. He says, You teach him that? That's all he wants to learn, I guess. Tried to teach him the Lord's Prayer once. But then he busted out the Lord's Prayer mm -hmm. in like a really tense moment, which kind of shook the gun, gunslinger out of his, what, somba? He was a bit asleep for a second. Mm -hmm. Here's a great comment from. Our friend, Java Book Geek Girl, when Roland asked Brown if he believes in the afterlife, and Brown says, this is it, I started thinking of this as sort of a trippy, mm. Western-style version of purgatory. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. Yes. Well, I think, so, I don't want to jump ahead too much, but we get into the, we, so he's, he's speaking to Brown, mm -hmm. he's letting him know, and it's funny because he keeps waiting for Brown to ask him. Yes, he says, yes that was very weird. Yeah, now the questions will come, as if that's what he's used to, and he's waiting to tell this story, and Brown basically just gets him to talk by not saying anything and letting him sort of say, well, it's, you know, like I want to tell him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to talk if you're not going to talk. Yeah. And then it comes pouring out. And so he begins to tell about the town of Tull. I kind of loved the way they did this exposition. Mm -hmm. I thought yes. it was a very clever, yeah. instead of it being him, you know, dialogue, verbally talking about it, it's a brand new chapter from a previous point of view. Mm -hmm. And it says, mm -hmm. um, Thank you. He says, <laughs> uh, I started to tell you about Tall. Is it growing? It's dead, the gunslinger said. I killed it. He thought of adding, and now I'm going to kill you if for no other reason than I don't want to have to sleep with one eye open. It's like, Dang, that's brutal. man, like this guy is just yeah. fed you. I get yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Especially no, in this world. Yeah. yeah. Like how but easy is it to just whoosh, dead? All right, cool, done. So then we get to Tall. Question. Zombies? No. Coming back to, I mean... Are they, is it more like Lazarus? Do we think that this is so not what's the, actually happening? So the town of Toll, so yeah. Brown is this guy who he, he lives out in a cabin somewhere, yeah. right mm -hmm. out in the desert. The town of Toll, Roland the gunslinger already went through and it was and killed. groups of people who, it was like a little western town. Mm -hmm. He meets up with the Al woman's in Allie, again, Allie mm -hmm. and describes her as having a scar and being ugly but also beautiful. Yep. And I'm like, and Roland, kind of firm, being kind of a dick. But menopausal. You know, yeah, yeah, I'm like, Come it, on. again, written by a young man. I'm yeah. like, okay, all, all right, the makes sense. All the female characters yeah so far are or like grotesque grotesque or or villains or make a mistake or like pathetic. super horny all the time Thank yeah you. like what like way too horny all the yeah. like come on the mule keeper's daughter who's just like nah. it. Yeah, like, <laughs> stop it you mule. slut face like, all right young stephen king quote. take it easy buddy from the book it he was, called her yeah. slut face i was like good slut. lord <laughs> what is she what do you see, Rachel? What do we got? Oh, there's a good one. M. Queen says, Purgatory, that's why everything is miserable and everything is ugly and nothing 
prettier innocence lasts if it exists and at I all. And I think it was Imqueen uh, themselves that said, too, that they loved the first book because it was just all loss. It was ugly. Everyone mm -hmm. was ugly. It mm. was miserable, misery. If it wasn't you in the chat, it was somebody else. And that was a great comment, too. Yeah. And I'm trying to read some stuff but not give away things for myself. Somebody mentioned something about how the this book, especially the section we read, is a full of a lot of misdirect, which mm. I think is interesting, but I don't really want to read yeah. too much into that. Like, I kind of you know. like that because it's quite a linear thing. Like yes. the, the man in black is going and he is following. So it's quite a linear adventure. Right. So the fact that it's kind of a little bit just jointed. Non -linear and, and yeah. yeah, I like it's, that. And misdirecty and everything. But great. it does throw you off. I think that the town of Tol, though, was, was uh, the first thing time that we mention a zombie or that we see a zombie is because the man in black came through mm -hmm. and brought this man back to life. Yes. yes. So then Allie yes. tells Roland, oh, he's alive but kind of weird because he was dead and the man in black came through and now he's alive and so he's like freaked out about that and then uh, they're whatever they're going through their day he's eating food they're having sex um, there's piano playing Hey Jude or something whatever mm. Then there's like on Sunday. That there's was very the, Westworld. The, the, oh, Wasn't come on. it? Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing, guys. I'm watching Westworld right now, and yeah. it's freaking me out. So I'm yeah. literally picturing like that little robot boy, mm -hmm. or if he's a, yeah, he's a robot, as the boy in chapter two. Um, I'm picturing a lot of that feel and that kind of like you know who Maeve th with that, a scar, or yeah. Maeve with the scar, yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of questioning humanity and what's but that it, whole what it is. bar, like absolutely, that's, yeah, that's yeah, the it, brothel yeah. bar thing, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So, so there's the, the the scene that takes place in the church on the Sunday where this woman, I forget her name. Uh, oh, it's a great Sylvia? name. Yeah, it's like Scuttle something. Scuttlebutt? What is it? That's <laughs> the Little Mermaid, I think. Uh, but uh, she, she, she That's takes just Scuttle. Scuttle. She <laughs> takes over the, the mm. congregation, the people that are there. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. We know Disney. Okay, okay. okay, great. I'm not trying no, to. Excuse me. I mean, Barry's going to just ignore it. Remember, like, um, uh, 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 it's uh, the, excuse me. Uh, it's on Jungle Hopper. Uh, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do this all the time when I wear contacts. I go, mm. Yeah. If I'm if I'm wearing contacts or if I don't have my glasses on, I'll do this to correct my vision. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Okay, great. That was nothing. Yeah, I got 29. But this woman, whatever her name is, is is like brainwashing the people, mm -hmm. and it becomes a very religious experience, and it's it's very like um. Ah, Sylvia Pitson. Sylvia mm -hmm. Pitson. It's very evangelical. It's very you know like exercise the demons. Oh, yeah. People mm -hmm. are convulsing on the floor, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and she's convincing everybody if you see Absolving evil, if you see evil, will you strike it down? I will. I swear I will. So I'm like, is this supernatural or is this people just? the way that some mm. people it, deal with religion. Like, I don't you're know. Always, it's funny, right? you're always the skeptic when we get to that. That's so funny, because yeah. I was yes. like, oh no, there's not, because they They're reference, taken over. in descriptions they reference like plagues a little bit, he like mm -hmm. you, you get this vibe that maybe people are, there are lepers, maybe that's yes, what wiped yes. out most of. How's this dude who's got a bird for a head and they were talking about like it's normal? Like that's well, not normal? Yeah, and the, okay, that? so <laughs> what, this is a, it's a Western, it's apocalyptic, but it it's also, there's like, when we go back into the real flashbacks, there's like fa Merlin, Ar Arthurian era. But a little bit different. But right? different, Merlin, and then you also have Merlin. the high, <laughs> the, the in the world speech. and the high speech. Yes. And so, oh, yeah, so here's, thing. so the tower, I feel like, just based on nothing, just an let's assumption. Get into it. Yep. Uh, Seven books some, away, let's yeah, get into it. Yeah. Is something <laughs> that's like either a gateway, like, you know, the forest in The Nightmare Before Christmas, for example. Sure, right? that's a something, great example. Something oh, the, like the, that, that. The wardrobe in Narnia. The yes, wardrobe, mm -hmm. sure. A gateway mm -hmm. of getting into different worlds, and maybe this is one where they're starting to blur together, or maybe he's trying to unite them because the little boy as well. Is that how you move on from purgatory? Yeah, is that, it kind of mm. reminds me of what my thought about Lost, Lost yes. was, was yes. that it was Jacob's Ladder, mm. and it was a place that, it was a place on Earth that you had to reach that connected different universes. Like it basically I was see. an alternate dimension, but also purga like that right. purgatory sure. is an alternate sure, dimension. Sure, sure. Sort of like, or Atlantis or the Bermuda Triangle yes. are mm -hmm. that they're a triangulation yes. of Mm -hmm. like that sort of passageway. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So that's sort okay. of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking too, because I'm a comic book reader, the nexus of all realities is the Incredible Hulk, Doctor Strange, it's in Marvel Comics where it's this exact same thing we're describing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's somewhere in like the Florida swamps where it go, it's an access point to different dimensions. Mm -hmm. I'm also picturing the classic Will Ferrell comedy, Land of the Lost, that sure. nobody watched. Mm -hmm. I did not. Yep, 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 yep. Where uh, it's I liked just Land this, Before Time. It's this crazy, not the same, uh, that's uh, that's Don Bluth uh, animation. <laughs> that's different. I love Don um, Bluth. Uh, oh, I can tell you guys a sad story about that. After I will not do it on the show. It's too sad. Oh no, okay. I will. Uh, so in the in Land of the Lost, it's it's uh, once they found this portal that was on uh, in a desert somewhere. 
they dropped into a land that had different things, like had the Titanic, it had Velociraptors, it had an ice cream truck, mm -hmm. it had things from all different times and place. Isn't that places. based on a, a like 50s sci-fi movie? Sure, probably. I, think so. I dream well, about Velociraptors all the time. Uh, <laughs> I used to too. Oh my god! I'll be in like a time. classroom in a doing way? a test, and I'll look out the window, and it's there like, <sighs> I was like, not again, and oh I'm gonna god. run. <laughs> oh anyway. Yeah. yeah, that's fun. Um, it is a mishmash <laughs> of genres, says Plaguewind. Which yeah, is, yes. which is what I heard about. And also in the intro, <laughs> Stephen King does mention that he was inspired by uh, J.R.R. Uh, Tolkien's right. Middle yeah. Earth, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, Hobbit, which I can see with the with the Definitely beautiful flowery language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the, the different speech. Can I we wasn't just call thinking. It prose already? Prose. The yeah. gorgeous prose. I wasn't. Pros and cons. It, it wasn't. Uh, ooh, <laughs> You're in a roll. Um, uh, that would be a book club of uh, uh, convicts in jail reading literature. That's what it would be called. Ah, mm -hmm. yes! Oh my gosh, a prison book go, club Alpha, called Pros and Cons! There's your next show. That's don't great. Don't steal it. That is ours. How do we cover okay. that? Uh, I don't know. It's uh, on the internet now. Somebody's going to do it. And they also want an Alpha Westworld club. We would, we would that. do that. That'd oh, be really yeah. Oh, for sure. Dun, yeah, I dun, think dun, it's... Dun, 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 dun. I know. I love that theme. Uh, I th it, yeah, it feels like Spaghetti Western meets apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic, mm -hmm. you know, journey a meets... Post-apocalyptic paranoia. Can that be a, yeah. a genre? Sure. I don't see post-apocalyptic because I feel like it's just straight up another dimension entirely. But I guess it's a But they talk about the water being gone yeah. and memory. He has yeah. memories of his family. Is that not proof? <laughs> <laughs> not to me. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Not me, enough empirical evidence. Naive, <laughs> that Look, I'm the guy that thinks that in some, uh, I, I believe that there's alternate realities and that in some realities Superman is real. And that comic book writers literally I are just tapping into that psychically and writing what is a reality somewhere else. That's that's the kind of idiocy I believe in. I love right? that Gorgeous. idea. It yeah. freaks me out. Oh, there's a book that you guys should read or we should read called. Okay. We'll um, put it forward for the mm -hmm. book club. Called the I forget what it's called now. It has a similar name to a TV show that mm -hmm. I'm forgetting, but yeah. it's about. All in the family. Can I Google something? Oh, author name? It's sim no. Yeah. It's similar to. It's similar to the magic. It's like. The exp it's not the expanse, is it? I don't know. I'll give it for you afterwards. But it's basically about a scientist who made a decision to sort of set his work aside and focus on his family, mm -hmm. and then he gets kidnapped by his other self from another dimension, who successfully cool. broke into, created oh, something, cool. and it. I mean, it dives deep into the science of what would happen if there really were multiple universes. Sure. Every time you make a decision. Yeah. How many of you Infinite. are there? Oh, Infinite. Community covered that episode with the roll of the dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the like darkest, the, the Yeah, the we're pizza. clearly in the darkest time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. We oh, now lost. we are. We are, we're yeah. We're definitely lost. Um, yeah. Was it by, was it by <laughs> James sure A. Knew. Corey? Somebody in the chat might know. Somebody in the chat. And if you guys have, somebody was asking earlier, book re recommendations, you can literally tweet to any of us. You yes. can tweet at Alpha, Geek and Sundry, Nerdist, everybody. Yep. Uh, <laughs> drop them in the chat even. We're trying to grab everything. Yeah. Wasn't that Earth Prime in the DC Universe? Yes, exactly. That's, yeah, we're Earth Prime and this is some other Earth. Uh, so imagination is an alternate reality, asks the moderator. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but to be yes. fair, the, the moderator didn't realize that this was um, ba uh, going to be a movie. So I'm going to... Oh, gotcha. I'm going <laughs> to put it you is. on blast. It <laughs> is. Mod, put mod on blast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Java Book Geek Girl asks, so was anyone else creeped out by the Man in Black slash Walter O'Dim letter? Walter O'Dim. About 19 and learning about death, because that really struck a chord with me. Yes, can yes. we talk about yeah. this for sure? Like, yes. if someone said, if you ask a person, if you say like a trigger word, and you were to hear something that you were so desperate to know, but it will kill you, yes. would you say it? No. No, I don't think I would either. She didn't last long, did she, our little Ally? But no, but that's humanity. I get it. it. So, but we didn't say it would drive her crazy. Yes. So, but the the great thing about that is that if she doesn't do it, she's It'll going to obsess crazy. over it anyway, because she's never going to say it. So it she's damned if she does, and she's damned if she doesn't. Did you use the example mm -hmm. where someone said, "Don't think about your mum naked," mm -hmm. uh, or something bad, or you'll go yes, to hell? And, and so, and you'll have by to. trying not to do something so much, you automatically do it. Mm -hmm. I get that, and yeah. I loved the example and the perspective of it all, because mm -hmm. otherwise, it yeah. just makes Ali look weird. But then he made it, he normalized it for yes. all of us. Mm -hmm. It's I, Ghostbusters. It's the end of Ghostbusters, right? Choose your destruction. 
Oh, okay, yes. Nobody think of anything. Oh, oh great. Steak puff, marshmallow yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think of nothing? Yeah. I can't meditate. It's, it's hard. So, oh, yeah. A white yes. room, it's mm -hmm. hard. It's hard to do. Yeah. No, okay. But now I'm like, how? What kind of what? Is it mother of pearl? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like an eggshell. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like a nice eggshell. Is it warm? A little cream. Yeah, definitely warm. Thinking of everything. I know. Every single little detail, yeah. yeah. So they, yeah, the letter messes with you so much. And so the town is, he. I mean, he kills it. He kills it. Is it because the man in black... Or is it because of the woman, uh, uh, petite, the fleshy woman? Latite, what's her name? Yeah, the fleshy woman. Uh, Sylvie. Does she Sylvia Pitson. Sylvia Pitson, not even close. Does she sick everybody on the gunslinger? Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I've got the page up in. right now. That was so disturbing too. That she walked in and he was like, and she was like, don't you, don't you want to make love to me? And he's like, you ever met a man who doesn't? And I'm like, but what? the first time he met her, he got these waves of compulsion to try and like. And I thought she, she was like a. She gave me like a succubusy vibe with Ish. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, or she's just again a regular woman who the yeah. gunslinger's like, "You're crazy. I have to you're take a your woman, baby so you're out of a your succubus. womb." Yeah. Like that was weird. That yeah. went from was oh, horrifying. to what the? She was just she was pregnant with the man in black's child. But it wasn't his child. It was the god, the king, the prince, the yes. crimson, mm -hmm. whatever. And then he killed the child. Like he like I was a little bit confused, but I didn't really want to go back and reread it. I'm confused with how the man in black jumped over a corpse to bring it back to life. The way he was mm. right writing that sure. I didn't get it couldn't visualize it if yeah. someone would like to demonstrate that that would be great <sighs> maybe he sprinkled some fairy dust when he jumped over or something I don't know what's the I jumping don't what's the jumping because you have to go over the body but like and he was distracting was everybody like hey trajectory uh, look at me. or the velocity hey, of the guys. jump and then he sprinkled some <laughs> stuff on him some, some voodoo <laughs> do dust. I don't know. Do hey guys, look at this. I can't. It's like this one. Yeah, yeah. it's that. Yeah, I can do. Hey, look at this. <laughs> hey, <laughs> look at this. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 it's the oh, it's, it's the magic castle. Okay, I think I got yeah. it. You know, it's sleight of hand. You're you're looking at what they're doing, and then they're doing something else. Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm su I'm such an um, idiot. I'm oh, always like, oh, look me this. too. Oh my god. Like, how did you do that? <laughs> Java Book Geek Girl says she convinces everyone the gunslinger is the interloper, and she preached about earlier, aka the devil, Satan, ultimate evil. Yeah, I thought that was great. It was really powerful. And terrifying, yeah. Yeah, it feels like, and even from the second he gets into the town, people don't want to speak to him. Mm. So it could be, it could be the supernatural mm -hmm. element to it, but it could be again a small town that doesn't like. But he's got new two people. guns holstered sure. onto his body. That is intimidating. And mm -hmm. do they know about guns? Because there's clearly then we get into the second yes. section where there's a whole like history, training and history and dynasty of gunslingers. Yeah. That that was really interesting. Let's talk I about yeah. chapter I'd love to know two. More about that. Mm. which was called the way station and that reminds me of the eyes of the dragon that's what that mm. is it's a lot of like family royalty and people poisoning each other and you don't know who's behind it and very it's game of very thrones oh, it's yeah just about yeah to it say. is actually yeah Especially i'm with gonna the have poison. to read that book mm -hmm. yeah and, and that like really elaborate <laughs> that was a got it pretty good nice <laughs> good job i could kill someone i was someone. sprinkling dust this whole time i was sprinkling <laughs> dust the whole time really. <laughs> The entire time. I'm yeah. just going to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah, so the way station is um, uh, Idris Elba comes across his little boy little in boy. the desert. A little boy. Mini, and, um, mini Anthony Hopkins from Westworld. Mini Anthony yes. Hopkins from Westworld. Mirage? I think the boy was real because... Trap? Because I don't think it was a trap, and I think that this feeds That's into Rachel's Sorry. theory about <laughs> what the I tower thought. is. I feel like this feeds into Rachel's theory about what the world is, what the yes. tower is, the nexus of all realities, because Roland puts him in some kind of a spell and starts reading his mind or asking him, where are you? And he starts describing our world. New York. He's describing New York City, Manhattan, being a rich little kid, walking to school and getting hit by a car. Yeah. So is this, is this a buried um, memory, do you think? Is that how he's activating it out of him? Is it a buried memory? Like how is, or is it a memory? vision? Possibly. Are they dead? I mean, it feels like it also could be, again, if we're bringing dead people back to life, is mm -hmm. this where they come, where they go to? Is this Great question. purgatory? I don't feel like it's purgatory. My take is I'm going to use a little bit of John Carter movie, another movie that nobody watched, but mm -hmm. I really enjoy. I watched that, and that it was not as bad as everyone said. Thank you. Oh. I agree. It's based on six... Exactly. Yep. But in that sci-fi uh, story, a body can travel between planets, and when it does, it is copied. So my thinking was the man in black was there in New York. The man in black can boop, 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 pop over into different realities, right? He's in New York. He sees his little kid get hit by a car. Why would he spend this time is lost. And he <laughs> copies the body's boy trauma. into the desert, into yep. this world. Yep. So the boy's body is still dead and it died, but its spirit and its consciousness or a copy, a duplicate, whatever that may be mm. with all of its memories and everything is transported into our world and is slowly losing its memory because the boy's describing, I think I know, but I'm going to forget my parents. I forget how I got here. I've just... I've just been here. I don't know what happened. But when he was describing to Roland, oh, I got hit by a car and I saw up and I saw the man in black. 
and he scared me. And I think the man in black did some magic, some mm. sprinkle magic. And that's how I, that's why, I don't know why, I don't know what the reason is. I don't think it's a trap. I think it may have been that he saw the boy or caused him to get hit by a car because the boy describes like like getting pulled or something and then the car hit him, struck him. Am I misreading it that? No, it feels like whether, maybe the twist, because it feels like Stephen King wants us to think that the man in black is deaf. Yes, and that, oh. you know, he, but he can also bring life yes. at the same time, which mm -hmm. we've already seen. Sure. So this is like the double side. A more side ancient of the version, coin. maybe, of death, in that it's life is, death is part of life. So maybe but he, it's. He a kills whole a boy, yet he brings back a drug addict who, mm -hmm. you know. Who remains a drug addict, which was sad. Yeah, who mm -hmm. made a decision, said, I can't stop. And Ali was like, all right. That was a bummer. It's all mm -hmm. you. But what I want to talk about, like, when it was like, do you know this person? Yes, I killed them. Yes, they're dead. The word death and dead, like we've kind of seen it in so many different ways now that I'm starting to chuck a Hector Navarro and not really think that death means dead. Mm. Because when it was like, like, you know, sometimes it's true when it was like, that was the last time I saw Ali alive and then you yes. hear him shoot it's her. True. Um, but then other times it was like, no, no, I killed the town or, you know, they're dead. I don't know, just like the way that he's talking about what's dead. Absolutely. Now it's blurred. Maybe it's that if the Dark Tower is connecting all these different worlds and universes, maybe it's that they're somewhere, you know, dead is not where you are. Dead mm. is in a different, because it feels like the gunslinger history feels like a, to I mean, maybe that's before whatever horrible event happened, but it just, like, the setting, fe everything feels so different to me. So we're definitely thinking it's alternate universes in the, you know, that sort of paradox and parallel dimensions, yeah. not um, a linear timeline going through, you know, maybe this New York memory was, sort of like him seven s spiritual cycles ago and that they were generating. I mean, that could... That so are we boop, 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 or are we... So, 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 so. Listen, all, <laughs> listen, Mod, all bets are off. That's the, the Dude, clearest that. way I could get that this out. This could be anything. <laughs> this could be anything and everything right now. It could be that. It could be all those sound effects you made because... Mm. I, I have to keep reminding myself, this is fantasy. This is Lord of the Rings. This is Middle Earth. Like, I don't know the rules of this world, mm -hmm. and we're learning it as we're reading it. There are familiar things in it. There are the settings of Westerns. There are guns. There are things that we're familiar with, but all everything could be completely different. There's the high language. There's the mm -hmm. in-world and the middle world and those things, too. So, yeah, I feel like I'm enjoying it. Because it's ch it is it feels very challenging that normally in this kind of book you get a little bit of the the universe building and rules set up so you know where you're playing no, and as I soon don't as you get know. comfortable. Poof. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah you're you out again. get a flashback to something else where you're like Merlin. Like and what? I am going to confess this took me twice, nearly three times as long to read as yes. it has the previous books. Mm -hmm. I will read the same line three or four times. Mm -hmm. The first time I'm like. Oh, wow, that was so good, I have to read it again. And then it's to try and figure out what I just <laughs> the, read. The and then it's trying yeah. to highlight it so I can read it again later. Yeah, yeah that's, well, ooh, it's tough, guys. My roommate told me before I started that this is the least best book in the series. That's what I've heard too. And uh, yeah, I've heard it from multiple, and I, f I feel like Stephen King even himself is kind of saying it. And he, he even said that's in the forward, he's like- That's why I went back and fixed mm -hmm. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. he said in the forward too, he goes, I really feel like this thing kind of comes together in the second book, the third book. So, you know, he basically told us, stick with it. Um, Slow burn. I have a feeling that I'm going to read through this thing and have a good time, but not love it, that I'll honestly have to wait until a film comes out before I can let myself get into the world. The movie, we've heard, is not just going to be the first book, because again, maybe the, the book has these weaknesses if it's mm. not really all there yet, that people were seeing from the leaked footage, like, oh, but that's from this book, that's from this book, that's from this book. So I have a feeling that I'm going to wait for the movie to come out, kind of let it wash over me, decide, like, do I love this? Do I want to spend more time in this world? And then go back and power through it. Mm. Uh, unlike, um, there he is again, Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. Oh, unlike man. Wrinkle in Time, I got the second book, started reading it. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. Oh, uh -huh. good. Yeah, so you have to keep us updated. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Well, you read it in a day, so that's something. They're telling us that uh, it's time for our next assignment. Oh, what? What? Okay. Already, I know. Okay. So we're... We're gonna have to. We're, I'm gonna come with like bullet points next week. We're gonna come because we Goodness. have. There's so much to cover, but I like that we're all coming up with different versions mm -hmm. of what this is. But definitely, there's some sort of cyclical thing happening. So I'm really excited. So for you guys, time for your assignment for next week. You can always catch up if you didn't read it this week or if you're rereading, whatever. But we're going to read up to the next two sections of the book. So that's going to be the first four chapters. We'll stop at chapter five and we'll close out the last week and the last show of the year with chapter five. Um, and as Hector said, we are always looking for our next book. We have a huge, huge list. And each, uh, each time we finish a book, you get to vote at home uh, what the next book is. So that's really fun. So please send us your recommendations on chat. 
on Twitter, tweet at Nerdist, tweet at Geek and Sundry, join Team Alpha, and then where can everyone find you guys on the worldwide interwebs? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, and you can always tweet at me book recommendations at Hector mm. is funny. Yes, books. Let's chat books. Even talking about starting this, I'm more shit. Hey. Ah, <laughs> even talking about that I've started this book, people are coming to me reading about it. You know who a big fan of this book is? Mm. Who's been chatting and I was talking fan casting with him? Dane Cook. <laughs> Loves a book. Oh my gosh. Get out of town. The same Dane Cook I'm thinking of? I hope so. Like comedian Dane Cook? That's the one. Star of Planes Dane Cook? Big, Future star of American Big Gods. fan oh, very cool. of the gunslinger. Nice. And I all love the it. books. Awesome. And he's trying to push it onto a lot of people. Before we go, like, can we read out some really cool description? Yeah, yes. <laughs> and I've got some in there quick. <laughs> The first one! The sky was an ugly bruised purple, weirdly lit from above with the first fingers of dawn. Oh! That's good. <laughs> How good! I That's good. It's like uh, a book boner. Uh, even, <laughs> even things like the wind moaned, Sorry. a witch with cancer in her belly. Oh. Yeah, like, <laughs> I had to go over that three times, being like, the, this is the, oh, he's describing the wind, the noise that the wind is making, a witch with cancer in her belly. You it's beautiful. One? Or should I say another? Uh, yeah, I got one. I, I've been reading this, trying to do the voice of Sam Elliott in my head as a narrator. Mm. I just feel like it'd be appropriate. Oh, yeah. It sounds a little bit like this in my head. The holster met him halfway between the door to his establishment and the street. His manner vacillated between a kind of hateful hostility and craven fawning. That's amazing. It sounds better in my head. No, Sam that was Elliot. really good. Sam Elliott, that was fantastic. amazing. I can't follow that. Yes, Somebody. you can, of course. I'll give it a go, but yeah, I, mean, yeah. before I just spent three weeks in Australia. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, and somebody had persuaded Aunt Mill to sing. Her voice warped and distorted. Did I get the ah? Uh? Pretty good. Distorted. Pretty Cut good. through yeah. the babble like a dull axe through a, a calf's brain. Oh, that was great. We do sound dumb. You nailed it. We sound so dumb. <laughs> that's okay. That's such a get. So I actually read the entire True Blood series with a southern accent in my head. Oh, that's oh, nice. Yeah, reading the book, I had it. Do you recommend the True Blood series? Better so show? much better than the okay, cool. TV series. Okay, so much better. Richard, you want to give us a and read? And sexy. Uh, I'll pick one for next time. Okay, great. I can't right. find them. <laughs> Man, we got to get Dane Cook to come on the show and talk I about know. Gunslinger. That'd be awesome. I know. He's a huge fan. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for joining us for Alpha Book Club. Keep tweeting at us. We love talking about books with you guys. Bye. Bye. Yes. Fast.